talk station in San Diego. And now, back to the Dr. Lindsay Show. Welcome back, my friends. This is Dr. Lindsay. As always, I'm here from 8 to 11, Monday through Friday, working with you to make every day a fresh start. Okay, let's go to our next caller, Kim from Oceanside. Kim, what's up? Hi, Dr. Lindsay. Um, I have a problem with my boss. All he does is put me down. Can I assume that you're a hard worker? You do your job well? I work my tail off. So what does your boss say? He says my work stinks, and he calls me a troll. He calls you a troll? Yeah. Ah, oh, Kim. Let me give you some advice. The next time he calls you a troll, tell him his breath smells like old socks. <laughs> okay. But seriously, what are your options? I don't know. Get another job, I guess. Can you afford to be out of work? Do you have any money in the bank? A little. But I was saving it for a rainy day. I'd say this is a rainy day, Kim. In fact... I'd say we've got a flash flood on our hands. So you think I should quit? I should quit. I can't make that decision for you, Kim, but remember, it is your life. You are in charge. I'm in charge. Good morning, it's 625. Problem in Del Mar. On the 5 northbound past Del Mar Heights, an overturned big rig has the two right lanes blocked. Traffic's crawling back into Sorrento Valley. A lot of rubbernecking on the southbound 5, making for delays back into Solano Beach around Birmingham. You folks on the 805 North coming from the South Bay, scout the go on Plaza Park Streets as crews clear off an earlier wreck on the right shoulder. KBX AccuWeather calling for more clouds burning off by midday, then becoming mostly sunny and warm, with coastal highs and south. Are already at 75, the base of 80 for its famous friends. Right now, it's 75. Your talk station is then in 627 now. Mr. Brill was late again. Just bring me my breakfast and my lotion. My hands are all dry. Dr. Lindsay, she told Martin from Vista La Mesa that you have to admit when you're wrong, but stand tall when you're right. Dr. Lindsay, what a load of malarkey. She's wrong, Dr. Lindsay. You're not wacko. You're wonderful. I'm gonna call one day. I will. Hello, friends. This is Dr. Lindsay. Thanks for joining me. All week, it seems, we've been talking about self-esteem issues. So tonight, let's cut to the chase. I'm gonna start out with a little exercise. I want you to close your eyes. Don't do this if you're driving, please. Okay, your eyes shut? Good. Now picture yourself. What do you see? Do you see someone who shines with self-confidence and assurance? Or someone who is mired in anxiety and self-doubts? All right, open your eyes. What did you see? Did you like what you saw? You did? Good. Stupid, Beth. In my life, there great times, big disappointments, and a whole lot of the unexpected. But those highs and lows don't alter how I feel about myself inside. I don't want to feel like I'm safe because then I've seen it a thousand times before. But you... 
Mr. Lindsay? That's right, Beth. I'm here to help heal your heart. You're going to call, right? No, I just, I just say dumb things. There's nothing dumb about sharing your feelings. On the radio? Tonight is our night. Call. It's ringing. Dr. Lindsay Show, who's calling? Um, Be Beverly, from South San Diego. Whoa, I hit a nerve. My lines are lighting up like a Christmas tree. Let's see, we have calls from El Cajon, Coronado, and from South San Diego, let's talk to Beverly. Hello, Beverly. Let's go, just it's free. Beverly, are you there? I'm gonna shop here more often. Yes. I'm, I'm Beverly, Dr. Lindsay. Um, I'm sorry, I'm, I'm, I'm just kind of nervous. It's okay to be nervous. Andy tells me that you're very lonely. That you have no friends in your life and no one to talk to. Is that right? Well, nobody really has a reason to talk to me because I'm a nobody nothing. Wait a minute. I don't let people on my show get away with saying things like, I'm a nobody nothing. You're something, Beverly. Something special. One of a kind. I want you to start believing that, okay? Okay. The first step toward making a friend is being a friend to yourself, right? Right. Good. Now you need a friend. Yeah, but I, I don't know how I'm going to find one because I just, I, I work and I take care of Mama and I just, I don't, I don't have any time. Life can't be all about work and Mama, Beverly. Find the time, no more excuses. Make some changes now. Make some changes? Mm-hmm. Once you've done that, the rest will be a whole lot easier. Now. Think of someone you'd like to have as a friend. Well, there is this one person. Whoever that is, plant the seeds and a friendship will grow. It's not gonna be easy. <laughs> Listen, we have to break for a commercial, but I wanna hear how things work out, okay? Will you call me back in a couple of weeks? Yes, I will, I promise I will. Take care, Beverly. Hello? Dr. Lin, Dr. Better Lindsay, not hello? be a personal call. Floor's mange, you need him. Get him up to it. Gonna be late in the AM. Need you here till 9. Mr. Brill, you know that... Your goddamn mother won't die because you're a couple hours late. I'm not nothing. What? I'm scheduled to work until until five, not nine. Jesus, you really are something. I'm something special. You, you know what? You're mean and you're rude and your breath smells like old socks and you can just mop your own mangy floor because I have seeds to plant. Lena, I've had enough of you. You're out of here. Well, you can't fire me because I quit. Good riddance, you fucking nutcase. Only reason I ever hired you is because you're dead, but he's dead and you're fired. You hear that? Fired. You should be dead. Not him. Whoa, whoa. Beth? You didn't quit. You got fired, Beth, didn't you? I did not get fired. Now I'll have to kiss Larry Brill's smug ass just so he'll hire you. 
You can't do nothing right, can you? No way, no how. Nothing. My life has been one big nothing, but no more because... because I'm really something. It's a Dr. Lindsay horseshit, ain't it? It's not horse poo. She's... Making you all mental. Why are you so mean? Oh, cut the boo hoo Get me some more lotion. I'm out. Dr. Lindsay cares about me. She wants me to be happy because I'm her friend. Oh, right. And me and the Queen of England like to sunbathe together. I need more lotion. And I need the TV listings. And I need them now. Time to spend with you. I wish I didn't have to take care of her. Little changes. Make big changes. Yes. Where the hell are you? Get up here. I need the tank. I need it. Get up here. Right now. Bet. If you don't get up here right now. That's right. Get up here. Saying goodbye to a loved one is never easy. But remember, you'll always have her in your heart. Time to go, Mama.
Mama will be happy to see you, Daddy. Beth Ann Needham is the owner of 2,000 shares of stock. What is this? You're telling me that if I sell this stock now, that I get $82,322? Well, no, of course I want to sell it. What? Right now, you numbskull. $82,322? Oh, goodness, Beth. You made me work in that place for 11 years! Why? We had the money! I hope you rot in hell! Until I tell Dr. Lindsay. She likes happy endings. Remember, Martin, your marriage is a partnership and not a battlefield for control. Don't try to Louise, you told me to call you faster. Your phone is always busy. Here's a couple. I appreciate you calling. You're listening to KBEX, your talk station in San Diego. Where's the only place to be late at night? You guessed it, right here with us. The best of Jason and Eddie. You might want to think about keeping a journal, like I do. I, I think it is the best way to discover what you're really feeling inside. And Emily? Good evening, Dr. Lindsay. What a lovely blouse you have on. Dr. Lindsay, I'm Beth Needham. Thanks. It is a pretty name. Nikki. Nikki, can we talk about this in the morning? Oh, my Matt gosh. School at eight, so I'll see you then. what the zip code is here. <laughs> Every day, same thing. <laughs> wow. I'm impressed. Hey, Dad. Good She's news. So popular. Wexler wants to do the deal. I told you he'd go for it. I've only been a year for eight months. He thinks I'm ready to go national. Buzz is, he thinks you're the next big thing in radio. She has nice offices. Nine zero zero zero. Okay. It's nine thousand Sanders Parkway. Uh huh. Thank you. Thank you very much. Doctor Rowland's office. Hi. I'd, I'd like to make an appointment with Doctor Rowland. Are you presently a patient of Dr. Rowland? No, I'm not, but I, I'd like to start seeing her. Well, unfortunately, she's not taking any new patients at this time, but I could give you a referral if you'd like. No, I don't want a referral. I'm, I'm sorry, are you a, a secretary? No, ma'am, this is her answering service. Uh, her secretary's out sick today. So you're not even in the office? 
No, ma'am. This is yours truly, answering service. Well, Cripes, how do you know if Dr. Lindsay is taking any patients if, if you're just an answering service person? We do talk to her all the time. All the time? Yes, ma'am. Now, would you like that referral? No. Thank you. <sighs> talk to her all the time? What a great job. I've interviewed several applicants. And, well, your ability to hold down a job for 11 years is most impressive. Well, I'm, I'm what you call a people person, Mr. Dunlap, because I'm, I'm very good with people. And we need people persons, Ms. Needham. When would I start? Immediately. But I have to be honest with you, there is one other front runner. She's, she's awful pretty. She was referred by Marge, one of our other operators. So, uh, thank you for coming in. And I'll call you as soon as I've reached a decision. I really would like to work here, Mr. Dunlap. Mm -hmm. It's a very special place, isn't it? Thank you. This is Dr. Lindsay's answering service. She's not in right now, but if you'd like to leave a message. This is Dr. Lindsay's answering service. She's not in right now. Hello? Ms. Needham. Hi, Mr. Dunlap. Hi, I was just calling to let you know that I didn't give the job to someone else. Well... You're a wonderful applicant. No, and better luck next time. That, yes. Okay. Okay. Thank you. No, that, thank you very much anyway. Okay. okay. Well, goodbye. You really think they'd hire a nitwit like you? Get real. I'm more qualified. Oh, and pigs fly. Of course, I know what I'd do if I were you. But you're a worm. You haven't got the guts. Yes, I do. And I'm going to prove it. Dang, you pretty girl. Get up, you! It's important to make a good impression on the first day. Okay, yes, that's right. here's all of his phone numbers, his addresses, the works. The only thing it doesn't tell you is that Ryan Kelly is a big jerk. You sure you don't want some banana bread? There's a whole bunch of it in the employee's room. Uh, no, I had a corn dog before work. Well, that's it for me. Everything all right, old ladies? Uh -huh. Finally. You getting the hang of things, Beth? This really is a special place to work, sir. Well, the last person that got hired lasted only one night. I hope you work out better. You know, that's sickly, that's really sick, and not one bit funny. Exotic dancing paid good, but then I found the Lord and I quit. You see, dancing naked isn't a very Christian thing to do. Do you ever talk to her? My plan now is to get a job dancing on a cruise ship. That way, I could spread his holy word from Guam to Monte Carlo. What's she like? What's who like? Dr. Lindsay, she sounds so nice on the radio. Dr. Lindsay? Is she nice? 
Um, I've never met her. I just talked to her on the phone. And yeah, she seems all right. What's that? What, you think I'm a druggie? <laughs> it's just for my allergies, okay? I get sick from dairy, bee stings, spandex, and peanuts. One Christmas, I ate a peanut. One peanut. I had this anaphylactic reaction. My lungs just completely <laughs> shut down. <laughs> What are her friends like? Dr. Lindsay's friends. What are you writing a book on, Dr. Lindsay? You are gonna wash your hands, aren't you? Yeah, of course. It's just I've um, never worked with anybody so famous before, you know? Oh, uh, we have clients a lot more famous than her. And trust me, most of them are real motherfuckers. Are you calling Dr. Lindsay a mother effer? Okay, I'm sorry. Sometimes I just forget that I'm born again. She is a wonderful person. I never said that she wasn't, weirdo. My lips were swollen for 10 days after I got those injections. And then I realized they made my lower lip wow. bigger than my upper lip. I looked like a frog or something. Did you, honey, that hurt like oh, holy funny. heck. Uh, yes, let me check the messages for you. This is great. Your husband called. Can you still meet me at 730 restaurant? Yes. Here's truly. 727 Roland. Hey, Marge. Busy night? Hello? Good evening, Dr. Lin... Dr. Roland. Marge, do you have a cold? No, this isn't Marge. Um, this is Beth. I'm new... I'm new here. Hi, Beth. <laughs> Welcome. Thank you. So, what's happening there tonight? Any fires I need to put out? Fires? You want your you want your messages. Hold on one second. No. Yes. Nikki Rogers called to remind you about the photo shoot and about the 8 a.m. breakfast for the Santo Thomas Orphanage Fund. Gotcha. Okay. My grandma yeah, used to say, away. give away some love today. Yes. You do it all the time. Hey, I like that. Give away some love today. Well, thank you, Beth. I'll uh, check in with you later. Oh, Bye. Great. Bye. Bye. Was Dr. Lindsay talking to me? <sighs> talking to me. Hi, friends. This is Dr. Lindsay. All week, we'll be taking anything we can give to help the Santo Tomas Orphanage Fund. These kids need homes. They need food. But mostly, they need love. Come on, San Diego. Give away some love today. Santo Tomas Orphanage Fund. Give away some love today? Other you said it on the radio? You said it on the radio? It is so cool. Chris, this is even cooler. I love you. I love you, Dr. Lindsay. And I love you, Mama, for dying! 70, 85, 105, 125. What's this? Oh, it's for Dr. Lindsay's orphans. Those poor kids need our support. Do you want to pitch in? Me? I just dropped 300 on a lip job. Sorry, no can do. Oh, come on, Marge. It's $10. I'm sure you can do $10. Please? Okay. Put me down for five. <sighs> one thirty. Shoot, this isn't gonna impress her one bit. Yes, you can write to him in care of the station. <sighs> I've got to say, a thousand dollars for my own answering service. <laughs> Beth, right? Right. Hi. Well, I can't believe this. I think helping orphans is really important. And who's this? This is Mr. Crinkles. Oh. He likes orphans, too. You have a giving heart. Well, kids need friends so much, don't you think? Lindsay, the Consuelo's on line one. She needs to talk to you, some kind of emergency. Yeah. Is it Matt? No, her sister in Mexico is sick and she needs to be back home tomorrow. Look, I'm really sorry I cut this so short. Uh, thank you so much. You're welcome, Dr. Roland. 
Okay, bye. Andy, um, what's the name of that babysitter you use? Gina the Whale. She's a great babysitter, but she'll devour your kitchen. You want her number? Yeah, I'm gonna call a couple other girls I've used in the past, but uh, just in case, thanks. Dr. Lindsay. She even smells nice, huh? Gina the Whale is not gonna babysit. Nobody's gonna babysit except for me. Wonder what her house looks like. I'm already getting the tingles. Keep your paws crossed. Hi. Dang. Gina the whale's available all week. is now a beach dwell. Can't work all month. Lindsay, we're in commercial break. Seven two seven Roland. Beth? Good evening, Dr. Roland. Hi. Listen, thanks again for raising all that money. It made a huge difference. You're welcome. So who's called tonight? Well, a girl named Gina called, and she said she can't babysit this month. And um, Susie called. She's got a full-time job, and she can't babysit neither. Oh, what am I going to do? Well, this this babysitter, when, when do you need her? For the next two nights. Well, you know, I do that, too. I, I, I babysit, too. You do? What about your job at the service? It's okay. I'm on a flex schedule. I can work days if I want to. Oh. Well, um... If Adrian doesn't call me back, could I call you by noon tomorrow? What time would you need me? I leave by 6, but I'd like to have you there by 5, you know, to meet my son, Matt, and get to know each other and, uh, well, basically connect. Me and kids connect really, really good. This is good to know, Beth. I, um, <laughs> might just give you a call. You'd be doing me a big favor. Oh, uh, I gotta go, but, uh, thanks. Bye. Tomorrow night at Lindsay's. Your husband called, and he wants you to call him back. Okay, bye. March. What? Eldridge Waldo Hospital just called, and they have to operate on my mama tomorrow, and I really need to be with her. You want tomorrow night off? And Friday, too. What's wrong with her? It's her heart. She needs a transplant. Oh, God. I thought having implants was a big deal. Sure, I'll cover you. Thank you so much. Judy's used to give Mama the snoozies. I know how to do the trick. So, buddy, what time you go to bed? Midnight. See what I tell you? It's full of mischief. Okay, uh, the phone's on the fridge. Make yourself at home. And uh, I'm out of here. Well, don't worry, he's in good hands. I can see that. Hi, big guy. I love you. You have something right there. It's like all over you. Sure, I do. You do, really. Mm. These brownies are awesome, Beth. Mm. Well, you helped make them, kiddo. Okay. One glass of milk coming right up. And I thought Mama was heavy.
April fresh. This is her journal. Scared me. Who are you? You really shouldn't talk so loud. Matt is sleeping. I'm Beth. I'm the babysitter. Who are you? Nikki Rogers, Lindsay's manager. Where's Consuela? She's in Mexico or wherever. You're her manager? Is that like a, a, a store manager? No, I oversee her career. So do you tell her what to say and what to do and stuff? No, uh, forget it. This is for Lindsay. Can you make sure that she gets it? Sure, yeah, she'll get it as soon as she walks in the door. What is it? Like you said, you're the babysitter, right? So it's really not your business now, is it? Just trying to be helpful. Good. Helpful's good. Now it's my turn to be helpful. Shawls went out in the 70s. Hi, Lindsay. Hi. Thought maybe you might want to relax when you came back. This is such a treat. Mm. I'm surprised Matt didn't devour all of these. Thank you. Mm. So how was he? Oh, he's great. You have yourself one heck of a smart and polite little boy, Lindsay. Yeah, he is something. Mm -hmm. <laughs> oh, that um, manager lady brought this over for you. Hmm. Mm. Lindsay, does she do drugs? <laughs> uh, no, no. Why? Well, just because of how she acts and stuff. Nikki, um, was a little intense lately. She's in the middle of negotiating a new deal for me. A deal you mean like a movie deal? No, no, my radio show might get syndicated. Synd what? <laughs> syndicated. Oh, no. It means I'd be on a lot of radio stations instead of just one. Oh, that would be great. Yeah, for my career, yeah. For Matt and I, I'm not sure. Sometimes being a working mom, well, the choices you have to make can be a real catch-22. My mama was a no-catch-nothing. She was not very smart, had a bunch of crappy jobs. Matt is so lucky to have you for a mom. Can I look at Absolutely. Thank you, Beth. You're very sweet. So are you. I'll see you tomorrow. You got it. Just too many changes this past year for Matt and I. I wish I had a crystal ball. If I had a crystal ball, and you would see me in it. 
my best friend. If I really impress her, maybe she'll get rid of that Consuela woman. Where'd you meet this Beth thing, anyway? At a swap meet? She works at my answering service, and she's a real sweetie. Besides, Matt thinks she is awesome. Well, everything seems to be in order. Except, you know what? You're pushing the envelope with Wexler. Has he said no to my doing afternoons? No. So, this could really happen, couldn't it? And that means that in less than a month, they're going to want me in L.A. That really scares me. Relax. Well, you could take up smoking. Relieves my stress. First thing in the morning, I want you to call mm -hmm. Mr. Joseph and okay. give him that message. Hi, guys. Oh, nice Hi. blouse, Marge. And your dreams, Lee. <laughs> hey, what's up with Needham? I don't know. I hope her mother's operation went okay. A heart transplant? I don't buy it. I think she just wanted time off. Where did that weirdo work before, anyway? Some convenience store. Why? But she was a flake there, too. She is a wacko. She's got a nice smile. So does a chimpanzee. Bye. 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 Hey. Yours truly, please hold. Keep holding, please. Keep holding, please. We'll be with you in a moment. Keep. <clears throat> yes, sir. Yes, I know you've been holding. <sighs> Fuck you, Beth Needham. <sighs> Sorry, Lord. Hey, Matt. Oh, can I have lots of nuts on it? Tons and tons of nuts. I wish you could babysit me all the time, Beth. I'm working on it, kiddo. Don't you worry. I don't know her first name. Uh, there can't be that many Needhams in your hospital having heart transplants. We don't do heart transplants. What? We don't do heart transplants? You don't do heart transplants? No. Well, thank you. You're welcome. Thank you very much. That was the biggest Sunday I think I ever ate. <laughs> Good. Little boys need to eat big to grow big. You're the neatest babysitter I ever had, Beth. No next of kin. That lying bitch. I, I mean, Beth. See, she needs me, and she doesn't even know how much. Stupid klutz, Beth. Good evening. You're back. Yes, uh, so you're babysitting Matt tonight. Yeah, and last night, I'm Beth, the babysitter. Hi, I'm Consuela. I know. Um, Lindsay told me that you were visiting your sister who was sick. Yes, she was having chest pains and they ran some tests on her. Turned out to be a bad case of indigestion. <laughs> well, let me go hang these things up and I'll be right back. What am I gonna do? Now's your chance. Seize the moment. My chance? Much more qualified than she is. I know. Well, thank you very much for your help, Beth. Is something wrong? Does anybody know that you're here? No, I, I just arrived from the airport. Uh, in fact, I'm gonna go call Dr. Rowland to let her know. Well, I don't think you should disturb her. She's just, she's just started her show. No, she would want to know that I have returned. Hurts. Hey, slugger. 
What are you doing up? My tummy hurts from all that ice cream. Oh, we'll fix that. We'll get some medicine out of your mother's medicine chest, okay? Okie dokie, artichokey. Just chew one of these up and your tummy will be all better, okay? And just count some sheep and go to sleep. And if you need me, I'll be right downstairs, all right? Me. You always call me for your messages. That was funny. Good night. Lindsay wants me to babysit again. And since you're not coming back, I guess I'm going to be babysitting for a long time. How's your mama? They say the operation was a complete success. Oh, goody. Yours truly. Yeah, I'm looking for Marge Hampton. Yeah, that's me. You can't come back to San Diego because your sister, your sister is so sick that you have to move her all the way to Mexico City. Um, that is too bad, Consuela. No, now's a really good time. Can you hold just a second? Adios. I'll make sure Dr. Rowland gets your message. Uh, Beth, I have a call about a dancing job on a cruise ship, so I'm going to take it in Dunlap's office. Can you watch the lines? Sure. Well, that's great, Marge. W where's this ship going? On the ocean. Thanks for holding, Mr. Brown. I was told you have some questions about Beth Needham. More of a background check. We've come across some discrepancies in her job application, and... You, you, you hired Beth Needham? <laughs> Good help you. See, I was in the Navy, the best father, Monty. Then when the girl was seven, she killed him with his own fucking gun. She what? Her mom swore it was self-defense because Monty was molesting her. Boy, I, I don't know. Could have been. Then, Mama Needham put her away for ten years. Put her away? In an institution, you know, uh, a nut house, a loony bin. So what kind of cockeyed crap is she up to now? I get these satanic vibes from her. Plus, she lies and she acts really weird about some of our clients. That doesn't surprise me, Mom. Beth. Well, you can kiss working for Lindsay goodbye. Kiss working for Lindsay goodbye? Oh, no. Mama, you're right. She's never going to let me. She's never going to let me take care of Matt now after she's heard this conversation. So unfair. Why is Marge being so mean to me? I'd never done nothing to her. Oh, Lord, she's possessed. <laughs> Same old shit. What am I gonna do? What am I gonna do? Remember that picnic? When I got stung by that son of a bitch bee? How I stopped breathing, I would have died. But you knew what you do, didn't you?
pulled a knife on you? Yeah. Oh, listen, thank you, Mr. Brill. I I'm going to tell our boss before she pulls a knife on one of us. Good luck. All right, thanks. <sighs> Come on, Lee. Why don't you get an answering machine? So did you get it? Mm, I cannot believe how hungry I am. What a pig. not going to get any more of this. You didn't get it, huh? You didn't get what? The dancing job. Actually, Beth, I did get the job. Now let's get back to work, okay? Good evening. Hi, Marge. It's Mrs. Metzler. Any calls? No, you're clear. You have no messages, ma'am. Thanks. Thanks. What? Do you want something? No, and stop staring at me. It gives me the creeps. doing on Dr. Owen's line. gets between me and my friend. <laughs> What's the matter? You're about to see the pearly gates. Marge, you've been disconnected. Nothing else I can say? That's it? Yeah, yeah, okay. One, two, three. Beth, please. There was nothing you could do. Marge was like a sister to me. You should go home. You hear? I'll get someone in the cover for you. No, it's okay. I'm fine, really. Are you sure? Mm. 
Yours truly. Hi, Dr. Lindsay. I'm so glad you called. Yeah, Matt and I have been out all evening. Why, what's up? Oh, it's been crazy around here tonight. Um, Consuela called. She did? Did she say when she'd be back? Well, sort of. She said that she had to visit her sick sister in Mexico City, and she wasn't sure when she'd be back. She thought maybe a, a few weeks. Oh, great. Just what I need. Well, that was your only message. So what are you going to do? I don't know. Is there any possibility that you could help me out? You mean, you mean take Consuela's job? Well, I, I, it would be a nice change of pace. No. No, actually, I just need a babysitter until I find out about L.A. L.A.? Yeah, uh, if Nikki can swing a couple things, my show's gonna go national and I'll be moving to Los Angeles. Nikki can swing a couple things? Uh-huh. So, until I know, I'm not gonna be hiring anybody full-time. Could you babysit on Monday? At six? Yeah. Great. <laughs> Thank you. I'll see you then. It isn't fair! She's ruining everything! You'll say some fat balloon butt Nick. Now I have to move to L.A. too. I mean, she's, she's just going to become friends with Dick Van Dyke and Julie Andrews. She's not going to have time for me. Because baboon butt. One day Lindsay's going to thank me for this. I think you're gonna get Lindsay to go with you to L.A. What the fuck are you doing here? Well, you ain't. And you're going to Hades. Uh. Uh. Say hi to my parents. What's happening with your show? <clears throat> They're gonna be airing some of my old shows for the rest of the week. Sorry I didn't call to cancel you tonight. Everybody knows that you should give up your purse to a mugger. I guess she didn't, huh? Matt is going to be staying with his father for about a week or so until, um, until I can deal with all this, so... What's there to deal with? My best friend was just killed for no reason. Best friend, but Lindsay, I think you're thinking a little bit mixed up. I mean, Nikki was just in it for herself. No, I don't think you know. Listen, thanks for coming by. Right now, I think I need to be alone. No, I think you. I think you should talk to somebody. Please, Beth. I'd prefer it if you left. But, Lindsay, you need to share your feelings. You know, you need to open up so that you can be happy. Happy? Nikki was just murdered, Beth. You want me to be happy? Yeah, but she's not your best friend. I mean... I want you to go. If anyone... Now. Other. 
You're listening to KBEX, your talk station in San Diego. Right now, it's time for the Dr. Lindsay Show. This is a recording of an earlier broadcast, so please don't call in. Just sit back and enjoy the best of Dr. Lindsay. Hi, friends, and welcome to the show. Hey. Just like you. Put your foot in your mouth. No wonder she told you to get lost. She did not tell me to get lost. She told me she didn't want company. That quack's smarter than I thought. She's gonna change her mind. She will. She needs me. She needs me to babysit. She needs me to cook for her and to take her messages. She's just, she's just a little, she's not thinking straight right now. She's a little mixed up. Now that's the pot calling the kettle black. Hey, maybe you dingbats really were made for each other. Oh, just be quiet, Mama. Sometimes I wish I could make a fresh start. Fresh start. <laughs> That's it. She needs a fresh start. Heck, I need a fresh start. There's so much to do. See ya. Bye bye. bye. So exciting. I mailed the letters. Check. Called Mr. Dunlap to quit. Check. Got lots of food. Maybe I should get some of that deodorant that we both like. That would be good. <laughs> Time to plant the last seeds. Hello? Lindsay, it's Beth. Beth, I'm, I'm kind of busy right now. No, just please, just listen, just, just listen, just for a second. I'm, I'm so sorry. I'm so sorry I said such stupid things. I say stupid things and people hate me. I don't hate you, Beth. Yes, you do. Yes, you do. Just like everybody else. No, Beth, that's not true. You just want something from me that I can't give you. I'm really, really alone. I just, I just can't. Lindsay, I really, really need to talk to you. You're the only one, you're the only person who understands me. And if you don't come, then I just don't want to be here anymore. Beth. Never mind, you're not going to come. Beth, tell me what you want from me. I just, I don't want to live anymore. I have all of my mom's pills here. Beth, you need to listen to what I'm going to say, okay? I want you to listen to me. Promise me you won't do anything until I get there. I am coming over. Promise me you won't do anything. Promise. Good. Now tell me where you live. Okay. 1170 Trelane Avenue. 1170 Trelane Avenue. Hurry. Please hurry up, Lindsay. I just... I... I'm gonna go. I'm gonna go, okay? I'll be there. Bye.
No, please. My mama. She used to put lotion on her hands all the time, morning, noon, and night. She never stopped. And her hands, they were just, they were just so pretty. I just, I didn't want to bury them with her, you know. The steak knife broke when I was cutting the other one off. Beth, I'm not sure I can help you. Oh, you're not gonna leave. You're gonna stay with me because we are gonna have such a good time, Lindsay. I have so much fun stuff planned. You know. I made some, some cherry punch. It's my favorite. You should try it. Why don't you put down the gun first? Before anybody gets hurt. <laughs> my daddy taught me how to shoot a gun before I even... I don't know, before I even learned how to ride a bike. So listen, anyway, why don't you try some of that, uh, that punch? It's really, really good. There you go. More. Finish it off. Listen, you know what? I was thinking, since you and I are going to become really, really good friends, I I want you to know all about me. So I'm going to tell you some of my, well, all of my secrets, okay? Okay. My mama, she's, she's buried out back under the tulips. And Consuela is under the petunias. Consuela? Oh, no, 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 she's in Mexico with her. Oh, no, no, no. Remember? You didn't actually talk to her. Remember that? She shouldn't have come back, but she did, and she got in the way. Got in the way? In the way of what? Our friendship. Oh, God. So you killed her? Well, I had to. <sighs> Feel okay? What did you put in the drink? You might want to lie down for a minute because I put some of Mama's sleeping stuff in that and you're going to be snoozing in a couple of minutes. Why are you doing this? Do you know what? <laughs> I didn't used to be very well, but... <laughs> I feel... I feel normal. I do, for the first time, and it's because of you. Lindsay, I'm... I'm one of your success stories. So cool. My country, tis of the sweet land of liberty, of the I sing. Land of my father's eye, land of the pilgrim's wife. From every ocean side. I can't remember the words. Where am I? Off to a fresh start. <laughs> what? College was behind me. Future looked shiny. Spent the summer on the road. They were the happiest days of my life. That's from a journal. I know. I memorized it all. What is this? What, the ropes and stuff? Oh, it's just until I can trust you. The police. They're going to be looking for me. No, I don't think so. I sent letters from you to the radio station and Greg saying that you were going to be out of town trying to figure stuff out. And my hand is still tired from practicing that signature of yours. You have lousy penmanship, by the way. Matt's with Greg. They're going to go to the house. I took care of that, too. When you were conked out, I, uh, I went over and made sure that it looked like you were uh, out of town. So we got tons of food, we got lots of board games, I got a full tank of gas. Heck, we're like Thelma and Louise. Just a couple of best friends seeing God's country together. We're not best friends, Beth. We're never gonna be best friends, can't you understand that? Because you're nothing but a murderer. I'm not nothing. 
I'm really something. I'm something special. Just don't you be, don't you remember anything that you said? You got Alzheimer's or something? Just wait a minute. I don't let people in my show get away with saying things like I'm a nobody, nothing. You're something, Beverly. Something special, one of a kind. I want you to start believing that, okay? So tomorrow we're going to be driving through Purple Mountain's Majesty. I love seeing America with you. Where are we going? Wherever this map says there's a point of interest. It's going to be tons of fun. And you're going to learn how to relax. Maybe you're right. I was overextending myself, wasn't I? Mm. I know I was. Well, I'm right about a lot of things. This is like a slumber party, isn't it? I mean, I never got invited to a slumber party, but I bet you probably got invited to lots of them because you were probably really popular in high school and stuff, huh? No. No, not really. I was in the science club. Mm -hmm. Science club girls. Consider geeks. Geeks. Mm. Loser, retard. I almost forgot. I have a present for you. This was my grandma's stuff. She was the only person who ever told me that I was special. Tell you, I mean. Look. Oh, look at that. <laughs> like the model from a magazine. <laughs> I don't have pierced ears, but. Hey, with you, her, I, I bet I could do it. Do it. Here, pick me out a pair of rings. Some that really say Beth. Go on, find some. Best friend, find some. Oh my God. Mm. Go get some ice. No, it doesn't hurt. This is like Christmas and my birthday, and Halloween all rolled into one. Here we go. Hey, look at the time. We have a big day tomorrow, so I think we should hit the hay. Come on, Lindsay. Good night, Mr. Crinkles. Oh, not such nice dreams. You keep up the good behavior, I won't have to tie you up again. I always have a complete breakfast because it's the most important meal of every day. Look at that sky. It's clear as crystal. Howdy. Hey, can I help you? Well, I sure hope so. Uh, my girlfriend fell off her bike a bit ago and whacked her ankle real good. She's really in a lot of pain. I'm sorry to hear that. I was wondering if we might be able to hitch a ride into the next town. You know, if it's possible. Actually, we're gonna stick around here for about a week or so. Oh. Oh, I see. I think you should wrap your ankle pretty tight. That should relieve some of the pain. Well, do you have anything we could use? Yeah, I'm sure we have something inside no, that- You know, inside, I don't think we have anything really that would be right. So I'm sorry we can't help you. Uh, well, thanks. Thanks a ton. Hey. You're gonna have to learn to shut up. I'm in charge around here, all right? Not you. 
Maybe you need a time out. You know, it's very easy, Lindsay. You just don't speak until you're spoken to. I may let you out for lunch. We'll have to wait and see. Depends on what kind of mood I'm in. The only way you could keep a friend is to put a gun to their head. You're supposed to be dead, you shriveled fat prune. Worms should be eating you for lunch right now, but no, you gotta show up. You gotta be bossy, the cow, nag, nag, nag. You know what? I don't ever, I don't ever want to see your fat face around here ever again. You got that? Go away! Well done, Beth. Well done. I'm so proud of you. Think. It's just the two of us now. <laughs> was a farmer, had a dog, and Bingo was his name. Oh, B-I-N-G-O, B-I-N-G-O, B-I-N-G-O. And Bingo was his name. Oh, there was a farmer, had a pig, and Piggo was his name. Oh, P-I-G-G-O, P, P, Strawberry shortcake would be nice for lunch. Got any strawberries? Sure do. Growing in California. Mm. Best in the world. You get more business if you put up the neon sign. Yeah. <laughs> Just uh, jump in there and help yourself. Oh. <sighs> When's lunch, Olivia? Come on. Oh. Damn it. Wish that woman had put her hearing aid in for a change. <laughs> Kidnap me. What are you talking about? Quick, come on. Quick. She sees that I'm gone. She's gone. Gone. She's gone. Oh, Jesus. This is a bad thing you see on the news. Lindsay! I don't know what in the tarnation is going on, but put the gun down, ma'am. Get out of the way, old man. Easy now. There ain't no need for shooting here. <laughs> Give you one free run home. 
One, two. I'm still counting. Three, four. Medicine. Mama, I told you to get lost. <laughs> Who the heck are you? Los Angeles, coast to coast. It's the Dr. Lindsay Show. Good afternoon, this is Dr. Lindsay. Welcome to the show. For those of you who don't know me, I'm a psychologist, but I'm also a mom. I have a 10-year-old son, Matt, who I'd like to thank for enthusiastically moving with me to Los Angeles and for really being a great source of wisdom. I'd also like to take a moment to dedicate my first show to Nikki Rogers, who made this all possible. Nikki, I know you're somewhere listening, and I'd like to thank you for everything. I've got a lot of healing to do, and being here with you is the best medicine I can think of. So, let's jump in. Clark from Jacksonville, Florida, how are you today? 